Hello, good morning everybody. Here we are broadcasting from the Cloister Public Library. Well, virtually broadcasting from the Cloister Public Library. Uh, okay, so I hope you are all well. Let me get back in. Ah, there we go. So I hope you're all doing really well. And um, uh, you're feeling healthy and strong and it's a beautiful day outside today. So hopefully you can open the door and take some deep breaths and maybe, you know, put a mask on and take a walk around the block. That's what I do all the time. Okay. Um, I'm going to check one thing here. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm checking Facebook. Sorry for the delay. I just wanted to make sure we are broadcasting correctly. And there's such a delay that it didn't look like I was, but I, I think I am. So that's good. Um, so today's story, I always like to have you guess what the story is going to be about by showing you something. And today is no different. So hold on. Let me bring up some video here. And tell me what you think it is. <gasps> What's that? What are those two shapes up there? <gasps> oh, this is better. Okay, can you see? What do you think it is? I can't hear you. Shout louder. What do you think they are? Oh, did you say bears? Yeah, they're bears. It's a mama bear and little cubs over there playing. Oh, and that's that's a loop again. Okay, so let's put our story time. So today we have a story kind of about bears, but the main character is actually not a bear, it's a cat. So why don't we start with our story so you can see. Oop. Ah, here we go. And let's back up the story. Yes, I was checking the story to make sure everything was working. So here's the story. There are no bears in this bakery is the title of the story by Julia Sarcone Roche, published in January 8th of 2019 by Alfred A. Knopp Books for Young Readers. And here's the title page and we're going to see the title page a couple of times, but first, <gasps> That's the bakery, the inside of the bakery. Don't they look delicious? Oh, they're making me hungry. Mmm. Rainbow hearts. Oh my gosh. And look at those cookies with oh, little cherries inside. Oh, and chocolate dipped. Oh, oh, and donuts. Yes. Okay, I better go to another page because now I'm really getting hungry. So here we're introduced to our main character. And he goes... There are no bears in the Little Bear Bakery, and that's the name of the bakery. So he goes, there are no bears in the Little Bear Bakery. I'm the whiskers of the neighborhood. And if it flutters, scurries, or scampers here, I know about it. The name is Muffin, and this is my tale. Each night the moon rises, the bread rises and I rise. The air cools and the sounds get interesting. That's when the night shift begins. <laughs> scratch, scratch, squeak. Is the mouse behind the bakery? Can you see that mouse? I can see him. Clang, crash, crunch, crunch. Is the raccoons in the dumpster? There are a bunch of raccoons. Can you see them? How many? Yeah, I think there's three. 
Snip, snip, flap, flap. Ah! Is the bats visiting the barber shop? I thought I knew all the night sounds until last night. Last night, after the sun rolled off the edge of the sky, a mysterious new sound rumbled over the windowsill. Grrr. I stepped out to investigate. The air was cool and wet like a dog's nose. The alley was empty. No mouse, no raccoons, not even a bat. The bakery's back window was open like a crooked smile. Grrr. I slipped into the darkness like icing melting on hot cake. Inside, I listened for clues. Maybe it was a mouse. Mice love sprinkles. Grrr. And that is when I saw it. It was the biggest mouse I'd ever seen. Actually, it was the smallest bear I'd ever seen. I was surprised. The bear was surprised. My tail was the most surprised. Grrr, rumbled from the bear's belly. Up close, the bear smelled like old socks, cinnamon, and adventure. The problem was clear. Hey guys, what do you think the problem was? Yep, the bear was really hungry. So the cat helped. And I was on the case. The rumbling grew softer and softer until burp. For a moment, everything was quiet. Too quiet. I heard shuffling sounds behind me. I had a tail. I mean, my tail had a tail. I mean, there was something in the darkness. The darkness had eyes, and they were looking at me. My whiskers trembled. My paws shook. It was an enormous bear. It smelled like a dumpster on a hot day and rumbled louder than a vacuum cleaner. Grrr. Suddenly, lights out. Everything went dark, and I couldn't move. I was smushed like a muffin between a couch cushion. I was in the middle of a giant bear hug. It was warm, like a bath mat in the sunshine. It smelled like that bath mat needed a bath. There was a low rumble from somewhere inside the fur. Brrr. Oh wait, that was me. It turns out big bears like sprinkles too. Light began to nibble at the edges of the window. It was time for naps. Even my shadow was sleepy. I made sure the bears got on their way safely. The sun rose and stretched like a yawn down the alley. The bears rumbled back to the forest and the night shift had ended. My job was done. Brrrr. So that's it. Another case closed by Muffin. No bears in the Little Bear Bakery. Not anymore. I took care of them. It was a messy job, but I handled it. Now it's time for a nap. By the way, we're out of donuts. <gasps> oh my gosh. They left such a mess. And they ate everything. They just left a little piece of donut. Oh, and there's the mouse, and he says, I love sprinkles. There was a mystery afoot in Little Bear Bakery, and Muffin was on the case. So what do you think? Was Muffin on the case, and did he do a good job, or did he do a bad job? The end. Hmm.
Oh, and uh, we got video footage sources for the bears, the black bear with cubs, and black bear cubs. And there are no bears in the bakery. Okay, let's get back on here. Okay, so Muffin, um, he helped the bears. The bears were hungry, so he did a really good job as far as that's concerned. But as far as his owner, the bakery shop owner, I don't know if she would say he did a good job because he made a mess and all, all her food was gone. She had to start baking really quick from scratch. But that happens. Sometimes cats make their own decisions and they're not what, you know, humans would think are the right decisions. It, it's just the way it is. Okay, I hope you like the story. And um, uh, I hope maybe today you make some drawings of cats and I'd love for you to send them in. So send them into our email. And um, guess what? That's it. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.